Hello everybody, my name is Rick Utzel here with Ergen Web and Ergen Web TV. Today we're going to take a look at something that brings a little bit of diversity to the market and diversity is a good thing. Okay guys, so the big challenge, and we talk about this a lot, is how to fill your PCP air gun. So there's hand pumps, there's compressors, we know this. This is a particular compressor that I, it's new to me, and I wanted to see what other options were on the market. Now this one is called the Omega Air Charger. And what's kind of interesting about this particular unit, when you look at it here, um, it definitely has a pretty cool industrial look to it. I don't know if you like that or don't like it. This whole unit is a completely self-contained water-cooled system that is uh, actually pretty slick. Doesn't run super fast, but it can run up to eight hours sustained use. That's pretty impressive when it can just chug and chug and chug. And what this is designed to do is just that. It's not meant to run super fast. It's meant to be very reliable, have a low power draw, and actually just fill bottles and guns at its leisurely pace. If you have one or two air guns or you have some small, uh, some small bottles you want to keep topped off, something like this may be exactly what you're looking for. The price point on this is right around $1,400, so it's not like the low end at all, and it's certainly not at the high end, but what this does, and the reason I have it for out here in this location, is it has a very low power draw, and it's just super steady. We are actually at our West Texas location, and we have now moved here permanently, and I do not have power here at the shooting shed. So my big compressor needs 220, that's not gonna happen. Uh, I've got some other compressors that run 110, but they draw a lot of amps to run. That's not gonna happen either, even though you can get a really massive generator to run it. What I wanted to find, and the reason I, I got this and I have a generator under the table, we're gonna put all that together here. So this draws right around six and a half to nine amps. Uh, maybe it'll go up to 12 to 13 amps when it first turns on, but then it drops down and runs pretty level. As far as watts goes, it, it uses about uh, 800 to 1100 watts uh, based on what information I'm getting off the generator panel. Don't know how exactly accurate that is, but when you're running, you can actually see what kind of power draw you're getting. So this little unit works very, very simply. This is your actual compressor head. There's three stages in here. What this really reminds me of actually is a hand pump that someone's put a crank on. Now, obviously that's very over, overly simplified, and it's a lot more than that because it is water cooled. It has an, um, this is like a grease reservoir and every so often you click this and it puts grease in to keep all the parts lubricated. It doesn't have an oil reservoir like some other units. So I actually think that's kind of cool. You just use this and it actually keeps, uh, keeps all the internals uh, lubricated for you. It does have, I said, as I said, a water cooling system. Um, when you get this unit, it ships with some additives you put in your water to help increase the efficiency of the cooling, they ship that with the unit. It has a radiator and a fan. Um, here's your fill hose. The other thing that this does, which I was really impressed with, it has auto shut off. Um, under the table, I have the Predator generator that was picked up at Harbor Freight. It was on sale for about $700. It is an inverter generator, and what they were telling me is this does have a computer board in it that helps control all the systems. You wanna run an inverter generator. It will work with the others, but you'll be better off if you get an inverter generator. I got the 3500 Predator because I wanted to have some extra headroom in case that surge when it first starts up really pushed the amperage. That generator will, will handle up to 25 amps. This will do most 15 amps, so I have plenty of room and I have run some tests with it and it does work very well. I don't know if a smaller generator like one of the 22s or one of the 2000 inverters will run this. I don't have one to test, but the price difference between the two I think I would prefer to have something bigger with more headroom than get something that just will barely work. That's just me. But at $700 for a good inverter generator, that's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. We'll go, I'll show you guys how this works. So what we're gonna do, I've got the power cord here. So I've got this plugged in. I'm gonna walk through these, these switches here for you. And I, this is kind of heavy. It's not so heavy you can't pick it up. I mean, it's probably 65, 70 pounds anyway. Uh, that's why I have it directly over the leg. I wouldn't want to put it in the middle of this table. So if you're going to have this on a table or stand, make sure it's sturdy enough to hold the weight. So you've got a few switches here. When I switch this on, this basically starts the system ready to fill and fires up the water cooling system. 
Now, you want to double check you're actually cycling water, so you can either pull the lid or just pull this cover off and look in there to make sure that the water is cycling. Once that's ready to roll, then you go ahead and close your bleeder back here on the back. I'll turn this around for you. You've got a bleeder right here. You go ahead and close this. Hook it up to your fill system and uh, push the start button, which is the green button, and it's going to start filling. On top here, you have the option to set your pressure. Now, right now, I have it set to 200 bar. The first thing I want to do is actually go ahead and top off my Air Venturi bottle here. This bottle sits at, uh, well, right now it's at 3,000. This can go to 4,500. This compressor will go to 4,500 PSI. So I'm going to go ahead and set that. You simply turn it up. All right. So I went ahead and set that. And now I can hook this up. We'll fire up the generator, and we'll go from there. Okay, that's not that loud. We, and we are in a metal shed, so it is going to echo a bit. But realistically, that's not loud. And that's the generator running on uh, without any eco mode. That's full out, full power mode. So let me go ahead and hook this up. We're going to turn on our water. All right, now we're turning. It's already on. Okay, I am getting good water flow. <coughs> Go ahead and close my bleeder at the back. You heard that surge just for a moment, and now we just wait. And that's, that's it. This will shut off the compressor component. The minute it hits uh, the right pressure, whatever you set on your setting at the top, it'll shut off. There is a bleed, a blow off valve, a safety valve, so if you go over pressure, it will blow that, and there are spare discs that come shipped, supplied with the compressor. So we'll wait a few minutes, let it top this bottle off, and we'll be right back. Okay, so the compressor just shut off, and we are just shy of 10 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the generator. <clears throat> One of the things that they tell you to do is make sure that you let the system cool down. So you're gonna let the water cycle run for about five minutes before actually shutting things down. We'll do that, we'll be right back. All right, so we went ahead and got the bottle topped off. It took about nine minutes. This was at 3,000 PSI. It took about nine minutes to get it up to 4,500 PSI. The system auto shut off exactly like it's supposed to. Now we'll go ahead and bleed this. Okay, that's gonna let the moisture and all the crud go out. Okay, now let's say we wanna go ahead and fill a gun. I've got a day state here. And the day state runs at about 230 bar. Let me just double check. I think it's 230 bar. We're gonna go with that. So we go ahead and just, this has got the fill nipple. So we're gonna put this here, set our pressure. So that's set at about 232 bar, 230 bar. And let's see, actually it says 250 on the gauge. We're just gonna do 230. Okay, so <clears throat> because we're out here in the desert, I gotta fire up the generator again. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, we'll turn on our water cooling. <clears throat> Make sure we got good cycling going on. <clears throat> now we can go ahead and hook it up and fill our gun. And it's done, so that took less than two minutes to top that off. That's very, very cool. Gonna let that cool down for a minute, we'll be right back. So that's basically it. You guys have seen how this works. It sort of sounds a little bit like a washing machine, just chug, 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 chug. It's very quiet. This, little, this product really reminds me more like the tortoise and the hare kind of scenario. Definitely the tortoise on the, on the fill rate where other compressors may have filled that punny bottle in two minutes. This took about nine. So definitely slower, but the fact that it just keeps chugging and chugging and chugging, if you're not in a hurry, this may be a great option for you. Fully self-contained, about $1,400. Pretty nice little system, and it doesn't have a lot of power requirements. If you're out in a remote area, something like this, and a generator may be a great option. When you're looking at compressors, 
full-size compressors that have gas motors, $3,500, $4,000, something like this may actually be a really good fit for you. And again, if you're filling the occasional bottle and mostly just filling off your guns, something like this may be a great option. Just a little bit more variety for you guys to look at when you're thinking about how do you want to fill your PCPR guns. My name is Rick Euster here with Airgun Web and Airgun Web TV. Thanks for watching.